What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video where today we're going to take a look at FSR 3.1 update on Ratchet and Clank and compare it to DLSS. The reason why I'm choosing Ratchet and Clank is because here's where FSR had some flickering issues. As far as Horizon Forbidden West and Ghost of Tsushima, the FSR implementation was actually really good. I have made videos about both of those games looking at it. Uh, in this video, the focus is going to be image quality because that's what FSR 3.1 aims to address. We're going to take a look at a few different scenarios and I've captured some of this footage at 120 FPS and I've slowed it down to 50% just so that we have more time to look at and analyze things because the flickering kind of stood out more during these cutscenes in Ratchets and Rivets Fur but also stood out during gameplay which we are going to take a look at. Now for this video, I've captured all DLSS footage with the GeForce RTX 4090 and all FSR footage has been captured with an RX 7900 XTX. If we take a look at the fur with FSR quality on the left and DLSS quality on the right, you can definitely notice that there's more flicker and instability on the FSR side. The DLSS side seems to be more stable, um, although maybe the FSR side looks a bit sharper. As far as how it compares to FSR 2, well, unfortunately, I can't seem to find all the FSR 2 footage that I captured many months ago on my storage drives, unfortunately. However, other YouTubers have made those comparisons anyway. So for this video, we'll focus on FSR 3.1 DLSS and the game's own TAA. As for the settings, our targeted resolution for this test will be 1440p. I think 4K, these upscales do a really good job to begin with. 1440p is a good middle ground to test in my opinion. And for the graphical settings, I've maxed everything out, including the ray tracing. We've disabled motion blur for obvious reasons. Chromatic abomination, as I like to call it, is off. So is vignette. We're going to begin with this cinematic because Nixus have done a great job. You can actually see things in real time as you change the settings. And as you can see, Ratchet's fur with the game's own TAA at native 1440p, you can see that there's a bit of flicker. It's not too, too bad, but you can definitely notice it a bit. Well, let's go ahead and throw FSR quality. And the flicker does actually get a bit more noticeable. Apparently the game's own TAA is a bit more stable, but we are rendering the game at a lower resolution with FSR as well. So we have the luxury of gaining more FPS. But let's go ahead and check out DLSS and see how that compares. DLSS seems to do a better job. It's definitely more stable. Don't really notice much flickering, although there is a, a little bit of flicker here and there, but it's definitely uh, a lot less noticeable than uh, FSR and TAA too. Let's now compare FSR and DLSS side by side. This is FSR quality on the left with DLSS quality on the right. And yeah, you can definitely notice that there is more flickering and instability on the FSR side. Although I do feel, again, that the FSR side does look a bit sharper maybe. Now let's drop to FSR and DLSS balance and you can see that the image become less stable now with the flickering increasing on both sides, incrementally I would say. And FSR and DLSS performance. I'd say performance is too much for both DLSS and FSR, although I do feel that DLSS does a bit of a better job here with the image being overall more stable. Right after the beginning cinematic, one thing that stood out to me was Clank in his backpack configuration was quite alias with FSR 3.1. For example, right now we're running the game at 1440p TAA, no upscaling. And if we throw FSR 3.1 quality, Clank is definitely more alias, but also the carpet, uh, the thin lines, you can see that they're kind of flickering a little bit. Those were a couple things that kind of jumped out at me. Uh, I don't know if you follow my channel, you'll know that I find flicker to be a bit annoying personally, and it kind of stands out. But uh, if we go ahead and throw DLSS quality, 
it does clean that up rather nicely. It's definitely a lot more stable. So this is with FSR and DLSS set to quality at 1440p. And here's a look at all three side by side. Some other differences that are perhaps a bit more subtle is the distant confetti and other finer objects that are moving around. We've gone ahead and zoomed in just a little here to kind of examine things a bit more closely. On the left side we have 1440p native TAA. As you can see uh, there's quite a bit of confetti floating and also some in the distance. And then if we look at DLSS quality in the middle we have even more confetti it almost it looks like or it's reconstructing it better. Uh, I'm not really sure how to explain it. But DLSS also seems to add a bit of ghosting as well, although there is a bit of that on the TAA side also. And then on the right side, we have FSR 3.1 quality, which adds its own form of ghosting to some extent, although it's not the same as DLSS. However, there's definitely fewer confetti on the FSR side than DLSS and TAA. And another thing that also stands out as we've examined up to this point is if you look at Ratchet's cheeks and fur you can see that flicker is definitely more present on the FSR side aliasing as well uh, than TAA and DLSS quality. Next I wanted to take a look at that confetti machine gif that AMD showed us of the improvements that they made with FSR 3.1. So here it is guys, on the left we have TAA native 1440p, the middle we have DLSS quality, and on the right we have FSR quality. It looks pretty good actually on all of them I would say. The only noticeable ghosting really is perhaps the distant falling confetti, but this is quality. Why don't we drop to balance? And I would still say it looks pretty good. Maybe FSR looks a bit softer uh, on the spinning propeller and the confetti churning in the background but let's go ahead and drop to performance where both of these should struggle a bit more i definitely do notice a bit more uh, ghosting around the spinning propeller on the front again and the the confetti churning in the background especially when compared to the native taa 1440p on the left but still i mean this is quite impressive fsr has improved quite a bit Lastly, I wanted to examine this other scene here with even more confetti and fine detail falling in the background, which is an almost white background. It allows us to see it uh, a bit better with DLSS quality on the left and FSR quality on the right. I'd say this is one of the better examples that I've provided and you can clearly see how much of the distant confetti is missing on the FSR quality side and if you pay actually close attention to the distant you can almost see like clouds of distant confetti popping in and out on the FSR side so it just kind of goes to show you how the algorithm and the differences between these two techniques reconstruct the finer details so yeah I mean from what I've seen FSR 3.1 has improved on FSR 2 which is nice to see I still however feel it's quite a bit away from catching up the DLSS at least in this game that I took a look at I will take a look at a few others as well like Spider-Man for example. I haven't looked at Spider-Man in quite some time and I do want to dig into FSR 3.1 a bit more in that game and dig into a few other things that I won't spoil but you might want to check it out because I want to put a few things, a uh, few theories out there that I've seen into the test to see if they're true. But anyway, what do you guys think? Have you been enjoying FSR 3.1? Do you like it? Do you think AMD's done a good job? Let me know down in the comment section below. I think this was a much needed update and I welcome it. But anyway, give the video a like if you liked it. It helps me out a lot. And consider subscribing if you so choose to. I will see you in the next one. Peace.